Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. This is episode 9 of Questions and Answers. I just did a Questions or Answers video a couple days ago, but I've been inundated with questions lately, so I decided to do another video today. In this episode, I'll be answering five questions about Lightroom, and we're going to jump right into it with this first question from Peggy. I really don't understand the difference between the vibrance and the saturation sliders beyond the fact that saturation seems stronger. Can you explain? Sure. There's really two things to keep in mind concerning the vibrance and saturation slider. Those are one, vibrance will increase the saturation of the colors of an image up to the point of saturation, then it will stop. On the other hand, the saturation slider will bring those colors to saturation then go beyond. So it's going to oversaturate colors. That's number one. Number two, vibrance tends to preserve skin tones. So it tends to not increase like the reds as much because it's going to preserve skin tones. So if you have an image with people in it, you may prefer to use the vibrance slider over the saturation slider. Now specifically to try to demonstrate that first point that the vibrance slider will bring things to saturation then kind of stop. I could actually use this image of this slide. I used a gradient as you could see and it's darker more saturated up here and it's lighter less saturated down here. And if I take the vibrant slider, slider and increase it, you'll see that it increases the saturation but it does more to the part of this slide that isn't as saturated. So it kind of increases that over the part that's closer to saturation. Okay, if that made any sense. Now on the other hand, the saturation slider, it's gonna affect every pixel. And it's gonna do something a little different than vibrance. Vibrance seemed to like increase the saturation down here and it kind of gave it the look that it was getting darker. So it was affecting the luminance level. It really wasn't, it was just increasing the saturation of the color of the slide. Saturation will look like it's going to be kind of getting brighter, but it's really just increase, increasing or decreasing the saturation of every single pixel in the image. And it's kind of doing it in an equal way. So we're even when I have saturation all the way up, we still see the gradient down here. Where when we compare that to the vibrant slider, when I turn that all the way up, we're starting to lose our gradient because it's kind of an uneven adjustment of the chroma levels of the pixels, if that made any sense whatsoever. So bottom line, try them both. See which were, looks better for your image because they are different. Number two, I would suggest if you do have people in the image and you want to preserve the look of their skin, try to use the vibrance over saturation. That should give you a better result. All right, next question is from Jen. In a previous video, you mentioned that after importing images, Lightroom opens in the previous import folder. Is there a way to get Lightroom to open in the actual folder of the import? Yes, there is. If we go over to the library module and what Jen is referring to, whenever you import images, Lightroom puts what Adobe calls focus on a specific folder. And I just imported these five slides for this video. And you could see if we look on the left-hand panel, it has previous import. That is kind of a folder. It doesn't show it as a folder, but that's a folder. And that's where Lightroom has focus. So whenever you open images or import images into Lightroom, you'll pop into this previous import folder. Now the disadvantage of this folder is that you can't reorder images. So if I try to drag an image down here in the film strip and reorder it, I'll get a warning dialog saying it can't be done, that this source does not support custom order. So that's one bad thing, you can't create a custom order. The other thing is this particularly uh, annoying if you have, let's say, a uh, couple hundred images down here, and you take one and you process it and then you send it to a plugin and it makes a duplicate copy for the plugin. When it comes back into Lightroom, it won't be next to its parent image. It will be way down here at the end of the file strip. And that's kind of annoying, usually like I'm next to each other. Well, there is 
a setting you could change in preferences so that Lightroom will put the focus on the actual folder that you imported the images to. And to do that, go to your preferences dialog, which if you have a Mac is under the Lightroom menu at the top. If you have a PC, it's under menu or edit. And then go to preferences. And if we go to the general tab, you'll see right here, select the current previous import collection during import. This by default will be checked. So just take that checkbox away just like I had it. Now, whenever you import images into Lightroom, you won't be focused at the end of the import on the previous import folder. You'll be in the actual folder of the images. That's where you'll be. Then you could reorder them, and when you send them off to a plugin, they'll be right next to the parent image and all that good stuff. So uh, that's how you would get around that. All right, next question is from Michael. My import screen doesn't have a destination tab like yours does. Why? All right, um, one of two reasons. Uh, if we go to the import dialog, if you're adding images, like here at the top, you can see where it says add, you won't have a destination tab because you're just adding them to Lightroom and they're going to stay wherever they are on your hard drive or your um, memory card or wherever. They're not going to be moved and they're not going to be copied. They're staying right there. Now, if you do use either move, copy, or copy as DNG, you'll see on mine I have this destination tab. Um, I think it was Michael. Michael is saying he doesn't have that. And that could be because you have it turned off. And all you got to do is go to any of these. Let's say next to file renaming and go to the left of where it says file renaming and just right click right there. See how the destination tab has a check mark next to it. If I take that check mark away, my destination tab disappeared. So just make sure that you have a check mark there and you should get your destination tab back. All right, next question is from Emmanuel. Do you have any idea why, why when I switch, spelled switch wrong, I'm sorry about that, from Lightroom to Photoshop, my pictures are always colder. Well, I have an idea what it could be, and it probably is something to do with color spaces. What you should do is go into your camera's menu system and see what color space you're shooting at. Usually it's either going to be Adobe RGB or sRGB. Now, once you determine that, go back up to Preferences in Lightroom. Again, in the Mac, it's under the Lightroom menu. If you have a PC, it's under the Edit menu. Open up Preferences, then go to External Editing, and look at the top here where it says Edit in Adobe Photoshop. Look at the color space here. Um, it's showing, now mine, it's Pro Photo RGB. I suspect that you have your camera set to sRGB, and you're sending it over to Photoshop in one of the other two main color spaces, either Pro Photo or Adobe RGB. Whenever you do that, you will get some shifting a color because the color space is kind of like a box of crayons. sRGB is analogous to let's say a box of eight crayons. Adobe RGB is analogous to a box of like 12 crayons and Pro Photo RGB is analogous to let's say a box of 24 crayons. Now the ratios aren't correct but what I'm trying to say is sRGB is the smallest and Pro Photo RGB is the largest and if you are using two different ones from your camera to Photoshop, the image may look a little different. Now, usually it's not a big deal, and most of us really don't care about it, to tell you the truth. Most professional photographers like to use Pro Photo RGB in post processing, even though most cameras won't offer Pro Photo RGB on capture. It's going to be Adobe RGB or sRGB. So my camera says Adobe RGB, and when I import, into Lightroom. Lightroom is going to use a Pro Photo RGB color space. When I export my images from, well, I should have said when I export my images from Lightroom into Photoshop, it's going to use a Pro Photo RGB color space. And, you know, it may look different, but I don't really mind. Um, so it's up to you. Check that. I think that might be your problem. Next question is from Bob. I have a MacBook Pro. And when I maximize Lightroom, there is no way to minimize it. Is there a setting or something I should know about? Yeah, uh, this is a weird problem. Um, it's not really a problem, it's a setting. And I'm not sure if this is uh, just for OS 10 
or if it's also a Windows thing. And what Bob is referring to, if you look at uh, Lightroom here, and over here on the left-hand side, because it's a Mac, we have these three buttons. So I could minimize it or I could maximize it. And what Bob is saying, when he maximizes it, he cannot bring it back down to minimize it. And typically, when you're maximized, you also could hit Command-M to minimize. And you can see how it's not doing that either. Well, what you need to do is go up to, let's see if I remember how to do this. Go to Window and go down to Screen Mode. And make sure you're in Normal Screen Mode. If you're in Full Screen Mode, what will happen is you won't have those little buttons there anymore. You see that? They're not there. And if I hit Command M, the computer just kind of beeps at me. Nothing will happen. And there's no way now to minimize this. So go to Window, Screen Mode, make sure you're in Normal Mode. Now you'll be able to get at those buttons. Now when you're in full screen and you're in Normal Mode, if you hit Command M, it still won't minimize. You hear that? So what you might want to do if you use Command M a lot is go to screen mode and try full screen with menu bar. I think that'll work. You see how we have the menu bar there now and we're in full screen? All right. Now, now there's no menu, but I could hit Command M and it minimizes. See? It gets kind of, I don't know why that's even a setting. It's kind of dumb if you ask me. So I would say just use normal and you'll always have your buttons there and you always could maximize or minimize uh, Lightroom as needed. All right, that's it for this episode of Questions and Answers. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.